Hi there, it's Jeff here with a video looking at contestability in banking. Uh, we're going to work through a 25 mark Edexcel question. First of all, here's the context. The UK banking sector has seen the rise of so-called digital challenger banks, such as Monzo, Revolu and Starling. However, the established banks like Barclays and HSBC still hold over 60% of the current account market. And here's our 25 mark question. Evaluate whether increasing contestability improves economic efficiency in banking or an industry of your choice. Well, you can choose any industry, uh, but only focus on one. I've decided to use banking in my answer. So for a 25 mark question, we need two KEA paragraphs, two evaluation paragraphs and a final reason judgment. And the answer needs to be supported by one, perhaps more analysis diagrams. Here's my first KA point. Now, because the question talks about economic efficiency, I'm going to focus on two of those, allocative and dynamic. Increased contestability, illustrated by the emergence of banks such as Monzo, Revlo and Starling, can improve allocative efficiency. This occurs when scarce resources are distributed in a way that maximises consumer welfare and when price equals marginal cost. So then build the answer relating to banking. Challenger banks... Monzo, for example, often operate with low overhead costs due to their digital-only models, so they don't have many stores, if at all. Consequently, this allows them to offer better interest rates on current accounts, which is good for savers, and lower fees when agreeing new business loans. This puts pressure on Barclays and HSBC to improve their services and pricing. As consumers have greater choice, bigger banks might be incentivised to offer a better service and lower cost loans, especially to small businesses. Average interest rates might then fall, as shown in my analysis diagram, which we'll look at in a second. The profit maximising interest rate is R1, whereas in a contestable market, this might fall to R2, perhaps even lower. Lower prices and increased quantity represent a gain in allocative efficiency. So here's the diagram that you might be able to use. Interest rate on loans, the quantity of loans. There's the demand for loans I've drawn as fairly price inelastic. So AR and MR falling. I'm assuming the marginal cost of loans is pretty much the same for each customer. So a profit maximising bank would uh, issue Q1 of loans and charge a high rate of interest R1, well above cost. So highly profitable for banks. Assuming, of course, those loans are paid back. Whereas in a more contestable market, pressure and competition between banks might lead to banks offering cheaper interest rates on loans closer to marginal cost. And that would be a gain in allocative efficiency. However, the impact on allocative efficiency depends on the degree to which consumers decide to switch to these new entrants. And despite availability of lots of attractive digital banking options, many customers are actually quite slow to switch because they've got strong default, default behaviour and brand loyalty. They might well have chosen one of the big established commercial banks when they were a student and just stayed with them. I did. As a result, traditional banks may not face sufficient pressure to lower prices or improve service quality, limiting the allocative gains from contestability. Moreover, the cost of a customer acquisition for challenges is high, it certainly is. If they can't build enough internal commons of scale, their impact on overall efficiency might be small. So a nice uh, paragraph of evaluation there saying that and whilst in theory, challenger banks disrupt the market, there's very, very strong default behaviour in the market. My second KA point is about dynamic efficiency. So dynamic uh, increased contestability can lead to improvements in dynamic efficiency, referring to the ability of firms to innovate and reduce costs over time. Challenger banks such as Starling have led the way by developing user-friendly apps, integrating real-time payment notifications, for example. Monzo has a particularly good reputation among students by helping them improve their financial management, avoid falling into expensive debt. And in response, other banks, including HSBC and Barclays, have brought their own digital uh, investment strategies to, to try and raise their game. So this process of continuous innovation encourages the entire industry to adopt more efficient technologies and services, ultimately benefiting uh, consumers. Not all consumers, of course. Many banks, of course, are closing branches, which for older people is an issue. 
These gains in dynamic efficiency can be hard to measure, but are important in today's fast-moving world. So quite a good there, quite a good paragraph on dynamic potential gains. Uh, the idea that challenger banks are acting as a catalyst to get the established banks to be a bit, bit more innovative. However, all that said, the extent to which dynamic efficiency is improved depends on the profitability and sustainability of new entrants. Indeed, many challenger banks, a good example of Metro, have struggled to become profitable. They've made big losses, relying heavily on venture capital to cover their losses and lacking the diversified revenues of the big banks. So without that revenue or loyalty, long-term innovation incentives may weaken, especially if the challenger banks fail to disrupt the market at scale. It's not easy, of course, to overcome the barriers to entry because of the dominance of existing players. And in the past, these incumbent banks have been accused of tacit collusion when setting interest rates, which has worsened consumer welfare. Now, we're looking for a final recent judgment. A nice way to start the paragraph is to use the words on balance or overall. Whilst challenger banks such as Monzo have the potential to improve allocative and dynamic efficiency, their impact is conditional on the scale of consumer switching and profitability. So thus far, uh, they've perhaps nudged the big banks towards digital improvements, but the industry remains an oligopoly. Interest rates on many loans remain much higher than the base rate. A good example there, credit card interest rates closer to 25%. And savers complain that the interest offered for their deposits is low and unattractive, often indeed well below the rate of inflation. So a nice kind of calibrated, nuanced final conclusion, saying that the challenges are having an impact, but that that impact is perhaps overstated at the moment. So there we go, a little walkthrough of a 25 mark essay on contestability and economic efficiency. Thanks for joining in.